I've downloaded a World Super League Pyramid and I'm going to simulate it for 100 years to see who climbs up and dominates world football. And I found this database on the FM Scout website. The pyramid is hard to progress through as six sides go into a playoff for only three promotions and three relegations into each lead to drop down and I've only just added the top two tiers for speed of simulation. The top division, the Premier League, I believe is sorted out through current ability of the squad so you can see where all of the big European clubs are. And I haven't updated any of the squads either, so it's the same transfers, none of the recent ones that have happened in the previous window. So for instance, Erlen Haaland is still at Borussia Dortmund. The teams in the second tier are spread out across the six different divisions on a level tier and can be a mixture of all clubs around the world or set in regions due to locations. So I'm excited to see after certain periods of time what will happen, who will prevail. Maybe somebody will plunder down into the lower depths. Maybe somebody will come all the way up and dominate these divisions. These are the exciting things that I cannot wait to find out and who wins the Champions League because yes there is still a Champions League which I am unsure on the qualification rules and there is also an FA Cup which seems to include every single team including non-league clubs in the early rounds and to give you an idea the second tier has two qualifications for the Champions League and the other two European competitions as well as 16 million pound for their prize money with the prize money in the Premier League the top tier being double that to stay in the division alone so again this could be quite Quite fun if you're looking for something to buy the time before FM23 comes out. Maybe you want to give this save a go. Speaking of FM23, head to twogame.com and you can pre-order FM23 right now and use code OMEGA at checkout. Gives you extra discount and makes it cheaper than Steam. And you support me as a content creator as well through using the code at twogame.com. The link is at the top of the description, but let's take a look at the very first Super League season. Now you can see here the transfers made in the first summer and Manchester City paid the most for the top three players and the prices are reasonably fair to start off with. Now in 2022 in the January window Inacio made a £38 million move to Sociedad which was the biggest move just ahead of Frank Kessé's move to PSG. And at the end of the first season it was the English teams who dominated the Super League with Liverpool winning just one point ahead of Manchester City and Man United in third place. Relegated though was Sevilla, Napoli and Porto. Erlen Haaland was the top scorer with 29 goals. The the six teams you see in this playoff are the six winners of the tier below, but you've probably already worked out that it's Sociedad, Shakhtar and Leicester who win their playoff match and gain promotion to the top division. AC Milan won the FA Cup, beating Atletico Madrid. Atalanta beat Bayern Munich who dropped down into the Europa League in the final, but it's Liverpool who are also crowned Champions League winners, beating PSG in the final after extra time. Which has meant eight managerial changes in the top division, including three at the very end of the season. Now I skip forward to September after the transfer window closed and I'm noticing some big deals. Andrea Bellotti, £96 million to United with Bruno Fernandes going to Real Madrid for £66 million. Now I was going to make a joke about Man United being terrible in the transfer market just like real life but then I've seen this. Brandon Williams from Manchester United to Atletico Madrid for £49 million. I found the second season too interesting to skip as Dortmund won the league by seven points above second place Liverpool and two of the promoted three go back down with Leicester hanging on for another year. And the machine Haaland scored 34 goals in the league alone. We will see the first non-European team in the top flight in the third season as Palmeiras are one of the three tier two teams to win the promotion playoff, beating Lazio 3-0. Other noticeable moves include Mbappe at Bayern Munich after his contract expired and Pep Guardiola comes in the door at Paris Saint-Germain after finishing lower in the league at Manchester City. Right then, let's waste no time and go 10 years into the future. Manchester United are champions, but even more surprising is Manchester City are very lucky not to be relegated. We are still quite European heavy, with the only exception being River Plate, who are relegated this season. And Haaland is still at Dortmund and still scoring goals. But let's look at some past winners. Since the Borussia Dortmund win, there have been multiple winners, including Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Inter and Chelsea, with Bayern Munich being the only team to win more than one and even going back to back. Tedesco is the man to lead Manchester United to glory and they have Karim Adeyemi in their strike force. A £196 million transfer from Bayer Leverkusen, but he's hardly scored a lot of goals since. The Champions League has been won by multiple clubs and even Leipzig got in as a surprise club. 
Other competitions are fairly normal, but it's nice to see some of the non-European teams winning the Conference League. And as you can see for the transfers across the years, the money has really spiked the amount each window to billions every single year. And it's almost like clubs go through an NBA-style selling state to a rebuilding phase. The most interesting year has to be 2026 when United blow £389 million on Adeyemi and Gavi on the same day, and £80 million on Rafael Mir the day after. The year is now 2041, 20 years into the future, and PSG are champions, but look who is relegated. Barcelona go down with teams like Torino and Fenerbahce surviving. What's crazy is Pochettino is their manager again after leaving Tottenham, just like he did in 2019. Wayne Rooney is the United manager, taking them to a third place finish. And Lampard is back at Chelsea after a spell at Dortmund. Real Madrid are loitering around in the second tier, finishing in third place though. They dropped down, finishing 20th place, then finished first, but lost a promotion playoff and are now stuck in the second tier. Some shock winners of the Champions League with Everton winning it in 2033 and Leicester three years later. Now, I do have the in-game editor accessible, so we can actually add current ability in the player search and see some of the best players to take a look at the sick regens in this universe. Like this amazing Dutch player at PSG, for example. This amazing Austrian player at Inter Milan. And Atletico Madrid's goalkeeper, who is easily the best in the world. I will also put the save game files for each point on my Patreon on the £5 tier. So if you want to see that, there is a link at the top of the description. But also, patreon.com forward slash Gaming will take you there. £5. It helps me as a career. And you get to see all these cool, wonderful ideas in this universe. We can also see staff members' ability to too, and look how many are 200 out of 200, including Jurgen Klopp and Zidane, who are our Arsenal and Manchester United scouts, not managers. And if I zoom right out, you can kind of see where a lot of the best managers are around the different clubs in the Super League pyramid. 10 years later and 30 in total, and things are very different as Leicester are your Super League pyramid champions. Brazilian club Flamengo are flying high in sixth and even Mexican team Pachuca are in the Super League getting relegated this season however. And even in the last 10 years it's been all English clubs including six consecutive Manchester wins followed by Southampton and the only non-English club Real Madrid. But there are some massive clubs missing from this top division. Juventus and Chelsea are on their way back up to the top tier. Barcelona are still in the second tier alongside Atletico Madrid, Sevilla and Villarreal. Liverpool are down in the second tier as well, sitting in 8th place, unable to bounce back. And what I did find funny was Spurs were champions five times out of the second tier, but kept failing to win promotion playoff. Fair play to them. It took five attempts, but they did it. Then when they finally got promoted, they won back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. How? Two of the best three players in the world are at Borussia Dortmund right now, including this 199 current ability. That's out of 200, by the way. Centre-back from Uruguay and the other being a South Korean centre midfielder, who I dare say looks way better. Nagelsmann is aged 63 and is Leicester manager, but a lot of former players have taken to the dugout now. Most notable is Harry Kane as Inter Milan manager and formerly Manchester United, PSG, Milan and Manchester City too. Alban Lafont is the Celtic manager, Arteta is still a Around at Leeds United and wonder kid Scalvini who seems to have built his career from the bottom up to Leverkusen manager and the same for Tino Livramento who is now at Santos but started off as a manager of Club African. Sabani is moving from Monaco to Monterey and Locatelli from River Plate to Lille and down here we have Ruben Diaz who is Bayern Munich manager and he's been around as well with an impressive CV of different clubs. My favourites though is Van Dijk at Aston Villa, Antonio Rudiger at Manchester United and even Erlen Haaland, who has been Dortmund manager three times already in his career and is now at Hoffenheim. I can honestly look at this page forever. Drew Bellingham at Wolfsburger. Trent is at Peterborough as their manager. <laughs> Lelujo would be crying. And the last one is Joshua Kimmich at Charlton, and he is absolutely dreadful. 50 years later, and it's Arsenal who have dominated the Super League pyramid, but the last champions we've seen, Leicester, are relegated alongside PSG. Just such a shame, isn't it? Although they have had the most dominant period we've seen so far with five wins in a row from 58 to 62 but no real surprise winners maybe Everton in 63 as the only standout
Liverpool are still meandering in the second tier alongside Newcastle, as are some big clubs like Juventus, Milan and Barcelona, all struggling to get out of the second tier. What I absolutely love seeing is Pachuca winning two Champions Leagues in four years. It seems to be the first of the countries outside of Europe to make a real impact, which has surprised me it's taken this long. But what surprised me even more is that Real Madrid are still the record holders for the tournament, but with only 15 wins. Thought it would be a lot higher. But we'll see obviously how much that changes when we finally get to the end and another 50 years into the future. In player search, I found Chelsea had a 200 out of 200 current ability talent with other clubs like Everton, Bayern Munich and Arsenal all holding the world's best players. So the highest possible rated player is a right back and yes, looks very good indeed. He came through the Olympia youth team, which is a team from Paraguay. This player from Everton is an insane attacking midfielder with some of the best mental attributes you'll ever see, but the creme de la creme for me is Bayern's Fabrizio, another midfielder who can also play from the right and he is one of the best regens I have ever seen. Some 20 sneaking in in the physicals, high attributes in the right places for the mentals, and godlike technicals as well. It kind of reminds me of what Lionel Messi used to be like on previous Football Manager games. We are 50 years in, but I'm still finding real people knocking about like Scalvini, who is manager of Real Batiste, in the second tier at the age of 67. And I actually think I've found a bit of a bug now. Because I sorted the staff by age, and I found a lot of real-life personnel aged 100 years old. And Ashley Cole, who is a youth manager at Southampton, aged 90. Right, we are 75 years into the future and RB Leipzig are the champions. Manchester United, I don't think I've seen outside the top division, so that might be something we need to check too. But recently, it has been either Leipzig or Spurs who have won the top tier of the pyramid, with Tottenham getting six of the last 12 years. Amazingly as well, I was right. Manchester United have never been relegated from the top tier, with the lowest finish in 60 place, one position outside of relegation. It seems all of the big Spanish clubs are struggling with them all being in the second tier here and some very interesting teams like the strongest from Bolivia and Cotton Sport which is the team from Cameroon making it up to the second tier. But nobody has been really dominating the Champions League, there's a lot of different winners including Besiktas there, but further down there was a period of time where Stuttgart won it every other year between 81 and 87 winning four in total, as well as beating finalists occasionally too. Most things in other competitions have been standard but I did see that Australian side Melbourne City won the UEFA Conference League which I thought was pretty cool. At this stage in the future though a lot of the best players in the world are spread out amongst the different clubs including an Egyptian side Al Ali with the current best player being Ferhat Aris a striker at Arsenal who once again is a god in this game. I only just remembered however at this point of the video that I haven't checked international football and to my shock we've had our first African World Cup winner. Because because in 2026, only five years into the simulation, Senegal have won the World Cup, which I find incredible, really. All the first team winners are Belgium in the first one, 2022, the Czech Republic in 2038, Chile in 2050, Colombia in 2058, Serbia in 2078, Denmark in 2082, and Portugal, first time winners in 2090. Brazil so far have won the most with eight, though. Ashley Cole, by the way, who was born 160. 16 years before the point we are at right now is still Southampton under 19's manager. Right then, let's go the distance and go 100 years into the future of this World Super League pyramid. 100 years later and Chelsea are the champions of the World Super League. Yes, this doesn't sound too exciting, but Gijon and Tigres in second and third is good to see. Manchester United at the bottom there and we will check to see if they've ever been relegated again. But in those last 25 years, we can see a variation of different winners, including Pachuca from Mexico and even Al Ali from Egypt. But I found something really funny when I clicked on Juve's team to see why they got relegated. They've built another new stadium and named it the Wayne Rooney Stadium. The last teams to get themselves through to the promotion playoffs is Barcelona, Olympiacos and Boca Juniors. Some big clubs in the second division leagues as well as PSG, Milan and Inter in this league alone. The Champions League winner is Sporting Gijon, but the last 25 years has once again been spread out amongst different clubs, but not Real Madrid. So I wonder if they still hold the record for the most ever. Incredibly, 
They do, with 15 still. 100 years later, with the closest to them being Chelsea on 12. Flamengo have just won the Europa League against PSG on penalties and once again, a varied amount of different winners from all different nations. We have two more first-time World Cup winners with Mexico in 21-10 and the current holders, Switzerland. Some very interesting players at this point too with Getafe Zacanza as the best player in the world, age 26 for Spain. Charles, another Spanish player who's a defender at Roma. Then Reynaldo, the Brazilian centre-back, also at Roma. But look what we have here. Sakir al Dasari, a Saudi midfielder who looks incredible. A Swiss goalie also at Roma, whose team seems to be absolutely stacked. And a Slovakian defender at Al Ali. Despite being in the second tier, it's PSG who have won the most Super Leagues in the last 100 years, with nine in total, and three Champions Leagues to go with that tally too. And Manchester United keep their record of never being relegated from the top division in 100 years, the only club that I checked to have done so. And finally, Ashley Cole did retire, but Jonathan Greenan, who was born in 1979, now aged 142, has been manager of Scarborough Athletic for 100 years. And on that bombshell, make sure you check out the Patreon if you want to download the save game files, and why not check out this video here where we trapped two unbelievable players at Wellstone Raiders. You've got no fans, that team you know who I'm all about, and see if they can carry them to the Champions League.